What's up, what's up, what's up? I'm Brandman Sean. And I'm Corey. And we are back with another episode of No Labels Necessary Podcast. You can catch us every Tuesday, every Thursday on YouTube, Apple, Spotify, wherever you stream your podcast here at the intersection between creativity and currency. Today, we got to talk about the fact that touring might be dead. At the very least, it seems to be suffering and we want to get into why a lot of people are actually conjecturing that Direction? festivals okay. are killing the game. <laughs> Do you think festivals are killing music? I mean, music tours. Let's listen to this quote or this little clip from Earn Your Leisure on TMZ. Touring is definitely still a thing. We see Drake, you know, killing the game right now with his tour. But you have to be very strategic on the markets that you go to and really understand where you're hot, where you're not, because um, it's definitely not a thing where you can just post it on social media and think you're just going to sell out 50 dates. Right. It's, it's important to touch your reach, right? So it's tough to say tour is dead when we see that Taylor Swift is about to do a billion. Yeah. We see Beyonce with the Renaissance tour, like you said, the Drake tour. What we did see last year was people teaming up to go on tour, right? And so you saw Baby and Dirt go on tour, and now they're trying to do it separately. So it, it's tough to, to, to really know where your reach is before you go to a market. Sometimes doing a smaller venue before you go back to the city to do a, a, a major show might be the key. Matter of fact, I want to read the comments on some of this too. So let's go to the handy dandy MacBook. Because I think festivals are clearly messing up the touring game. 100%. Right? At the very least, look at it like this. I get more value for my time and my money if I go to a festival than go to see a single artist. Yeah, bro. It's, it's, it's in real life streaming. You know what I'm saying? The same argument we make for, hey, for ten ninety nine, I can listen to everybody. But for one eighty five at Rolling Loud, I can see at least 10 of my favorite artists. Why would I then go pay... 250 for your solo ticket. And discover a couple new artists. Yeah. And if we're in like the TikTok singles era, I don't have to sit through my favorite artists B-sides yeah. that I might not want to hear. Yeah. The way a lot of these consumers, and maybe not just your favorite artists, because maybe you want to hear their B-sides. But let's just say your four favorite or ten favorite artists B-sides. Yo, bro, really? Eh, I just need those top three, those yeah. top four. I don't, I don't need the whole set. So I could either, you know... Like one, some of those people's sets are going to be shorter anyway because there's just going to be those songs at the festivals. And then two, if I don't like it, I can keep moving and just find the next person. Who else is at the top of their set? Yeah. Go eat. Go chill. Take some flicks. All that shit. Yeah. It's a, it's a it's a hell of a package, bro. Yeah, and and you don't feel like you wasted your money, to your point, right? Like if I'm at a solo show and I leave halfway through the set, I'm thinking like, damn, man, that's... You know, that's a hundred fifty dollar ticket. I only stayed for four songs. You kind of feel forced to stay and experience the whole thing. Mm. Versus at the festival, I know that if I'm not enjoying this particular set, I can leave and do something else. Like you said, to your point, take pictures, eat, go. Festivals usually have like a million different activations mm -hmm. at them, right? And I can go do these things and still feel like I got my money's worth, even though I didn't get to see a hundred percent of a certain artist set. And like, it's just a better deal overall. Sure, the homies. You know what I'm we can just talk and have a conversation. You know, mm -hmm. real concerts aren't a good space to have conversation. Yeah. You know what I mean? Less less arm room, leg room. So look, there's an argument for sure. There's a strong argument that if festivals aren't completely killing the tour music touring experience, they're at least revealing a lot of the weak points in it. Because yeah. you need to have a hell of a show. Yep. Right? Hell of production. So if you're not, they mentioned like Taylor Swift, Beyonce. But we already know what Taylor Swift and Beyonce do, their level of fandom that they have, right? Yeah. And then the level of production that they do for their shows in a way that speaks to their audience is very high. So it's going to be different. I could see Taylor Swift or Beyonce at a Coachella or something else, but also know that if I go to their own show, it's probably going to be something completely yeah, different. It's going to be different, yeah. It's going to be different, right? I'm not going to be able to get the full Beyonce experience. Matter of fact, their fans probably prefer them in their in their single shows, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Whereas some of these mid-level artists, mm, yeah, I might rather just catch you in the middle, man. Yeah. So we got to take a quick second because we have some big news. If you like the marketing, branding, and music talk that we do in our content, you have an opportunity to meet with us in person and get the real deal information about how we are currently moving in the music industry, blowing up artists that we can't put online. So if you want to see myself, Sean, J.R. McKee, give you marketing, content, and branding advice that's absolutely guaranteed to help you move your career forward, then you want to make sure you check into this event 
It's going to be super exclusive. We're only letting in 60 people, not 61, not 62. So if you don't make it, then you know your best bet is to hope that we do another one. So if you want to make sure that you're one of those 60 people, go to nolabelsnecessary.com or check the link in the description if you're watching this on YouTube. And yeah, hopefully we see you there. All right, there, there's that. Let's see what some people are saying in the comments. Quace got me. <laughs> Said pricing is one reason. Tickets are higher than ever now. Mm -hmm. I completely agree. We already know. Matter of fact, we're about to talk about Lil Baby. And ironically, before Lil Baby had this ticket sale problem that they're talking about now, I remember when the prices were got put out and people were basically saying, like, who does Lil Baby think he is? I think his 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 tickets were like two hundred something plus. Yeah, which isn't crazy. You know what I'm saying? We'll get into why <laughs> it is crazy. I think it is crazy. <laughs> But you know, not no disrespect to little baby. Like I'll get it to why it's a little crazy. <laughs> also, marketing, little baby specifically, he says in this case, I feel like his team didn't do a great job marketing his tour, right? So yeah, we already know little baby's gonna have to come up. Timing, if Beyonce, Drake, and others are touring at the same time, and again, pricing is so high, people have to pick and choose. Mm, that's a good point. Who they want to see the most? Yeah, that's a good point. I didn't think which about could that. possibly hurt the weakest link ticket sales. Mm. Yeah, but then. You then you have to make the argument of how many Taylor Swift fans are little baby fans and vice versa. Maybe five, ten percent. Taylor Swift, Beyonce, Drake. Okay, Drake one probably hurts the most. Uh -huh. Yeah, because Drake got 21 Savage too, so yeah, that definitely hurts the most. Yeah. All right, see, yeah. and that's what, so yeah, we say, okay, <laughs> we got to get into that little, that Beyonce, I mean, the, uh, that little baby combo. But also, artists need to put out their best shit. Fans get sick of unreleased snippets and only dropping an album or tape every two years. That's not enough. So that's Adina Moden. What do you think about that comment? I don't completely agree with it. I think if I think that's less true the longer the artist has been around. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because then to your point about someone like a Beyonce or a Taylor Swift, or even the point we made about, let's say, new Lil Hoodoo, what the fuck ever, has three songs I like. Right. So I'm just 12 minutes of that set I know I'm a like. Versus Beyonce has had hits since I was a child. I know that there's a large chance that I will enjoy most of Beyonce's set. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So I think the bigger the artist gets, the more quality music they put out, the less that's necessarily true. Um, and then I think that's also proven by like legacy acts who still tour. Like they be touring and they ain't released music in decades. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And still come back and some of them at least will still come out and, and do like really good shows. So I don't I don't think that's a part of the issue necessarily. So the level of fandom for sure does account yeah. to it. Now this person said, nah, it's the economy, which still does play in the ticket sales. Yeah. This is why festivals I've noticed have been doing two to three days compared to one day about four to five years ago. Pack as much artist pack as many artists as you can in that time frame and jack up the price. I think that is inaccurate to an extent, right? I think a lot of festivals were aiming to get to the point that they could be two to three days experience because mm -hmm. there were two to three day festivals back then, yeah. but other ones just had to build up to it. Now, being able to jack up the price, obviously, based on who you have, is for sure a thing. But when we just talk about the overall experience, the, it, to me, it just continuously goes back to the overall experience, the package deal, just economically of having multiple artists, yep. and then the experience of a festival being more dynamic. You you know, for your ADD and just chill. You just like you got a picnic mixed in with yeah. maybe a little carnival for, in some cases, mixed in with your concert of multiple different artists and vibes. Hey, you just touched on the real Chico. Too, it's hard bro. to beat that. What's up? These artists don't be having food at their concerts, bro. That's 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 a big one, man. Like hey, at man. least at the festival, I know I can get dinner while I'm there. You know what I'm saying? It ain't gonna yeah. be the best. Yeah. You know, but I can eat, bro. Versus the festival, all you got is Hennessy and water bottles, bro. Like, come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's real. Because now you got to figure out a whole other thing to do yeah. too. On top of that, yeah, yeah, before or after, I'd rather see EYL than Drake or Baby. That's an interesting take. <laughs> so EYLs earn your, your leisure for, for these folks, so they're saying they'd rather watch. I wonder if they're saying they would rather see the live podcast or the Drake or Baby, or if they're just saying they would rather either like, way, I don't believe go them. to a festival. I don't believe yeah, them. Either way, I don't that believe them. That seems pretty <laughs> wild. I don't see the comparison. Unless they just don't like Drake or Baby as an artist. So the real comp would be what artist do you like, period. All right? Didn't The weekend <laughs> just break a tour revenue record or something? something? Yeah, yes. Yeah. Uh, what you call it? <sighs> Not baby. What's his name? Bad, bad uh, bunny. Oh yeah, he did. Also, too. just did yeah. did that. So that says a lot, right? 
Now let's get into a little baby situation though, because Kid Leroy, or the Kid Leroy to be proper, exits Lil Baby's tour because of low tith ticket sales forced cancellations on the tour. Mm -hmm. Low ticket sales forced cancellations on the tour. One, again, like I said, I saw memes talking about how high them things cost. And the vibe was a little different than when they were talking about how expensive Beyonce tickets were. When they're talking about how expensive Beyonce tickets were, it was like almost this is low key marketing because that's just getting the word out, creating this high demand, and people are gonna make a decision whether they're gonna do it or not. It's like, damn, I think I might have to, you know, take cut off a couple of nail appointments or barber mm -hmm. appointments or whatever, and just just save up, you know, whatever <laughs> I can to be able to go. This little baby it felt like a legit, like, who does he think he is? This is too much. But I think that speaks to audience, too. Yeah. When you're talking about street rappers, yep, a lot of their fans, they're not paying a certain amount of money to go. Yeah, bro. And we've seen it in so many iterations. Restaurants, concerts, merch. Like, they, they have enough data where they should know. Like, that shit ain't going to fly over there. Yeah. And then I think That's the biggest argument I've seen is for Lil Baby's overall production value from past shows. Like I've seen people say like, hey, like his last shows weren't the greatest, you know what I'm saying? He just kind of rapping on stage, you know, vibing back and forth versus like Beyonce, you know, but she got like the lights, she got the dancers, she, she put on the whole, a, a real production, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. a real high value production. And so I feel like that is mostly where Lil Baby messed up. It's a couple things too that we'll get into, but like I think that's one of the big things that he messed up was like, even if, we give him the benefit of the doubt and say like, hey, he did up the production value. We just ain't seen it yet. He hasn't done anything to 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 comfort us and make us feel like that's the case, right? So he has like to the earlier points by made, he ain't been marketing it. He ain't showed nothing. He ain't he ain't gave he ain't talked about it. So it's like I'm going into it thinking it's the same little baby show with a with a hundred percent markup <laughs> on the ticket prices. Like I and yeah. I don't want no parts of that. That's to me. That's a beautiful thing, though. That what you just said because it still proves that this stuff is mat matters. Like no yeah. matter how big you are, you could be a little baby, but if your show isn't lit, right? Yeah. If you don't know how to perform well, eventually you're not going to get those second and third and fourth sales, mm -hmm. right? You can bring anybody in off of first hype, but that word of mouth starts to spread, and yeah. you don't get those repeat customers just like any other business. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. And this is what people are saying. I've never been to a little baby concert. I actually never watched one of his performances where I would like feel like it was something I could truly judge. You know, you have some of these like you're on stage with somebody, and you know, so yeah. I don't judge them for not moving around a whole bunch or being super exciting. But if this is what people are saying. It's just like the second or third week of a movie being out, and everybody being like, "Ah, nah, it wasn't worth going, bro. They got me, but don't let them get you too, dog." Yeah, exactly, you know bro. It's like it's like your first, your first buyers become your biggest haters <laughs> down the line. You know Facts. what I'm saying? And then people pay more attention next. They're like, "Man, you must have really loved them to to buy this high ticket and go check them out." And you saying it's bad? Oh yeah, I, I'm taking your word for it. You know? Yeah, exactly. For real. So I think. If anything, before we even get into the other details around Lil, <laughs> Lil Baby's touring situation, again, it should be promising for people who feel like, man, like people don't really do real shows anymore. We It does show that it matters. Mm -hmm. People think fans don't care. No, fans do care ultimately, especially as they have so many choices. Yeah. All right. I got me doing so many things instead of just watching this rapper be on stage and not doing things, which has actually been a long time critique. For rappers, right? Right. Like crazy, bro. Like, <laughs> don't learn, bro. Like yeah. crazy. So <laughs> like you got that. And then you gotta consider what does my shit cost? Because what is what can my audience afford? Yeah. You start to realize the reality of what your audience looks like or not, what they're willing to pay or not. So just because another artist is up in those fees, that doesn't mean who you serving mm -hmm. can afford that. Like their audience complains but then complies, your audience complains and then exits the building. Yeah. All right? Yeah. And I think too, real quick, to the point of, then I kind of think about it, to the point of that comment that said, it's because he hasn't dropped music in a long time. I can understand that now because the music kind of, it it puts you in the position to where you're like, man, this ticket is high, but I would like to see him perform my new favorite song from the Ooh, album. You know this is a greater point. Yeah. Because... Not only do you not have any new music, 
you're not known for performing. Yeah. So why would I go? Yeah, exactly. Like there's zero <laughs> reason to go based on that. So it says, interesting, interestingly enough, the Kid Leroy has also dropped out of the tour for reasons not fully explained by the Aussie artist. Fans who bought tickets to the now defunct tour stops receive automatic refunds and previously announced performers Glorilla, Rilo Rodriguez, Gloss Up and Hunno are still on the bill for the remaining dates, at least for now. Now. You mentioned to me that Joe Budden said, based on the opening acts, it doesn't even look like he's trying to sell out a tour. Yeah, yeah. Speak on that, because that's that's a wild. I never heard anybody make that critique before. That's a wild critique. Yeah, so I'm paraphrasing it, but I, I do agree with him. Where he was saying that, you know, typically what we'll see, especially with bigger acts like an act of his size, is they would try to bring along two or three artists that are. Either right below them. Let's just say, let's say if Lil Baby is a ten or the artist is a ten, they might bring on people from from somewhere between like a seven and a nine. You know what I'm saying? Because you know that for the most part, these people can carry their own weight when it comes to ticket sales. Um, there's a high chance they will introduce new people into it. There might be people who come to see them. They don't really care about me, but they they want to see them, right? And when you look at the artists that he put on his lineup. Rollo Rodriguez is the one I'm the most familiar with. The other two I've, I've heard of, but I'm familiar with Rollo Rodriguez and, and Glorilla, of course. It, it feels like Glorilla was the only real like swing at trying to get an act that could maybe bring out a significant amount of ticket sales. You know, right. I think that if like for little baby's demographic, there are a lot of artists that he could have pulled from that are hotter than some of the ones that he brought out. But it, it does genuinely feel like. Maybe he's trying to put his homies on. Maybe some of these artists are like his artists. Like, you know, he has his label um, and he's trying to do them a solid. But that was your buttons point. I was like, bro, based on your opening acts and who you chose to make a part of this tour, I don't think you were trying to sell out either way. And I would expound on that and say, I don't think he purposely went into it thinking, like, I don't want to sell out my books. You know what I'm saying? No artist thinks that. I think that he thought that his name would be enough to carry their deficiencies in ticket mm-hmm. sales. And then he's learning that, damn, even me, little Baby, can't make up for this. Because as fans, bro, we look at the whole experience. Like, I look at the opening acts to you. I'm not just looking at you. Yeah. Right? Because I'm thinking, like, man, if the show three hours and an hour and 45 minutes of that is these – Random motherfuckers I got to pay attention to, I need to care about these people. You know what I'm saying? Do I want to sit through that? Exactly. Or do I at least want to sit through and and discover? And especially going back to the type of demographic he has, his his core fan base, you know what to expect (laughs) from these type of rappers. It's going to be 30 minutes to an hour of the exact same shit you're going to get when Lil Baby walk on stage. All right. (laughs) And to that point, right? So we go back to who is your fan base? Yeah. You have... A street fan base who's not going to pay that much money, yep. right? Like you start getting to the two hundred dollar plus range, they're not paying that to go to a regular concert for the most part. Like the the bulk of your audience. Yeah. Now, if you do this in a smaller venue, you could probably book it out, right? Yeah. I mean, I'll pack it out. Or, or if you do it at a club, then you'll bring out that other side of your street audience mm-hmm. that's willing to pay two, three, a thousand plus for in a whole different type of experience. But obviously, that probably doesn't make the kind of money that you would need to make. It's not mm-hmm. enough people, right? Obviously. So once you start upping that price, you're cutting out a lot of this audience, right? Yep. And now you're entering the upper tier of your audience. The upper tier of your t- audience is, is now starting to make decisions whether they want to pay this kind of money with you or other artists mm-hmm. who are the Beyonce's, the Drake's, and things like that in the world, right? Because now we're just talking about the more convert commercial side of your audience. Yeah. Not only are they making that decision on who they want to go with, they're also because now you're competing, right? So now are you not only competing with those other people once you hit that price range? Your openers need to have a lot more pop appeal because the commercial side of your audience. They would like to hear a little bit of that Glorilla. Mm-hmm. Uh, even if they don't listen to Glorilla heavy, it was like, oh, I know about that Glorilla girl. It's it's a hype around her, mm-hmm. right? Yep. A Rilo, a, a Gloss, a Hunno. That commercial side of the audience probably hadn't even heard of those names. Yeah. Right? So like, you have to understand what you're packaging for. You can't just change the price of something and then not reconsider the package from ground up. And I think that's where people mess up too. There's some people who 
because of your appeal, the Beyonce's, Taylor's or whatever, like, yeah, now you're just cutting out some of your audience. So there's nothing to worry about. But more people should be thinking about if I want to up my prices, I need to rethink my entire package. Period. Yeah. Yeah. And think about the I guess the 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 preconceived notions around the packaging you put together. Cause street artists are not known for putting on the best shows. You know what I'm saying? Not in a typical tour setting. And it's it's I don't know, like when you go to like a street route show, you pretty much know what to expect. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so going back to fan expectations, like, man, I already know at least 85% of what to expect here, and I probably don't like it. You know what I'm saying? Like to your point, these type of artists tend to do better in like club settings and, and like really specific like party settings, and like this isn't what this is. Like this is, we're not partying here. We're just watching them run back and forth on the stage. <laughs> and, you know, like I said, that he hasn't said nothing about production value. Lil Baby don't put on costumes. Man, I love seeing artists wear costumes at their at they tours. But I love seeing him going in character. But he ain't doing that. Lil Baby's not doing that. You know what I'm saying? You know, you know that as a Lil Baby fan, that he's not doing that. And so it's like, it's all these negatives working against you. And then yeah. the ticket price is the, the cherry on top. It's the thing that makes you go like, oh, no, I'm not, I'm not going to that. Let's, <laughs> let's take a quick second to talk about the elephant in the room. If you're an artist trying to grow, we already know what your goal is. A thousand true fans. Everybody talks about it. But how do you actually make that happen how do you get those fans it's not just about getting views you got to push people further down the funnel so let's talk about it number one do you have these people's data right do you have the ability to text and build highly engaging relationships with these people can you boost your spotify plays to actually have engaged users not those surface level playlisting plays well guess what fever fan is a platform that allows you to do all of those things in one so it's not overwhelming. You don't have to switch and have all these different logins and switch all your LinkedIn bios. You have even a LinkedIn bio tool that you can do. So everything is done in one place. So not only do you grow your fans, you do it for less work. How about that? Check out foreverfanmusic.com because we know it's not about views for the day. It's about getting fans who will be there forever. Foreverfanmusic.com. Let's get back to this video. Let's go through these comments, right? <laughs> um, the people saying L Roy ain't ain't good are mostly Cardi fans. That's a wild assumption. <laughs> um, <laughs> so we'll get whether you agree with these or not. One person said, bro trying to do a tour with no album. He thought he was Drake. Yeah, there we go. All right. Another one <laughs> said, not going to lie, ba Lil Baby ain't a good performer. Most of his concerts are dead. It's not lit He's a good rapper, but not a good performer. He don't do a lot of hype with the crowds. All right? So have you been to a baby concert? No, I haven't. So you can't yay or nay that one. Yeah, but we'll, yeah. Let's I mean, I've seen videos. Let's see what you think of these. <laughs> y'all y'all saying he can't sell out arenas. He already has and has some on his tour that's either sold out or close to selling out. Most of the shows, man, bro, I ain't going to lie, boy, this – this uh, comment section is giving me a lot of grammatical challenges, bro. <laughs> Most of the shows he canceled are places that he just doesn't have a huge ban fan base like Indiana and Nashville. Okay, see, so when I first saw the news about this coming out, there was some rap page, and I made that same comment on it. I, I made the exact same point. I was like, bro, you look at the places like Nashville, somewhere in Indianapolis, like Seattle, like all these places where you're probably like, uh, I don't expect Lil Baby to have a lot of fans here. He could have been kind of reaching, thinking that, oh, I could hit Seattle and bring out the same amount of people I could bring out Maybe in Memphis. that's what he thought Kid Leroy would do. Probably, yeah, exactly. Now we're yeah, we starting to see some yeah. logic. He thought Kid <laughs> Leroy is going to cover these markets for me. Yeah, so it's, it's – but then you start thinking about it, and it's like, okay, I do still think there's a point there, but if he's trying to, to your point, go the ticket route of a pop artist, you know what I'm saying? Hey, you want to swing with the Beyonce's and the Drake's? And, and who, the weekends and the bad bunnies, you better be damn sure you're gonna have the same type of pull. And they're out, not even their, like their, what is it, their secondary markets, the same way they would, right? Like I know that Drake could go to Atlanta and do well, and then probably also go to Seattle and do well. You know what I'm saying? His, his yeah. reach extends that far. And so I think that goes back to you and your team just being logical about what you can realistically do. Like, hey, it would be nice for us to sell out an arena in Seattle. But we probably not. Like I said, but like to your point, maybe they thought Killer World was gonna cover that base, right? And that's that's what they're thinking was that which if, if that's true, then I I, I will understand that. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, that's why we booked this specific act, right? I'm I'm bringing this 
pop guy to help me out in the markets that typically like pop acts. You know what I'm saying? So then yeah. Kid Leroy dropping out could have been a huge blow. But it the only thing that makes me think it's not that is that the ticket sales were still low even when we all thought Kid Leroy was still going to be on it. Well, <laughs> and yeah, because that's why Kid Leroy is gone, yeah, exactly. based on the report, right? Yeah, yeah. So in that case, that either reveals one of two things. One, little Baby's level in terms of pop level of clout isn't quite what people might assume it to be, mm-hmm. perception-wise. Or two, Kid Leroy's yeah, clout yeah. isn't what you would think perception wise particularly in those markets or probably a little both actually because they're both on the bill and they didn't sell out yeah right so neither one of them are hitting in those particular markets we already know when it comes to hip-hop little baby's like eating like he's sweeping yeah. up there might still be some some critique in terms of like your performance and, and did you drop an album all those other things but at the very least in those other markets it's, it's not necessarily about that it's just like all right do you have the appeal now, another person said he sold out every tour last year with Chris Brown. So that's also another pop person. So people are they they're doing these pop pairings. If you think about the the 21 and, and Drake and mm-hmm. the, you know what I mean? Like so it, it seems like that's a common um mutual relationship that, that they're seeking these days. Like, let me find my pop guy. The little baby was probably like Drake's already taken. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He got 21 <laughs> on him, and he got Yachty as a, as a best homie. I can't I can't <laughs> scoop up under under him. Who else is um doing that? And then you yeah, can't I, take Chris Brown every year. Yeah, and I saw like Doja Cat is taking Doechi and Ice Spice on her tour. So it's the same one, big pop artist, smaller rap, just well, inverse, mm-hmm. right? Big pop artist, smaller yep. rap artist. You know what I'm saying? The, the rap artist adds a little flair and mm-hmm. a little little rougher edges to the show or different yeah. vibe to the show but doesn't step on the toes of the pop artist and then the pop artist offers a, a wider reach for the rap artist. Yeah. That's a beautiful relationship. Yeah, I mean, I think with Doja Cat, <laughs> I think with Doja Cat, it's her trying to re- remind us that she has black fans. That's what I think. You know what I'm saying? So look, I got Ice Spice, bro. Look, you know what I'm saying? I got Doji, but I was going to go either way. You know what I'm saying? But she didn't have to do that for me, but I think that's what it is, yeah, so just, All right. So there's <laughs> other parts of the agenda possibly. Uh, let me see. This person said Gunner would have sold more. What you think? Like if he was on it? Because that's a, actually, we didn't talk about that. Does that actually, because of the whole Gunner baby situation, would that even have had any impact on the, the touring? Mm, see, I didn't think about that until you said it, but fans are petty. And I could definitely see fans like, oh, I got to pick a side. I'm picking Gunner and I'm not buying your ticket. I could 100% see that. And if you think about it too, it's like you've alienated one of the best people for your core demographic. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like like I said, you brought up like 21 Savage is probably one of the other best. Drake already got him. Maybe Uzi, but Uzi probably about to do his own tour. You know what I'm saying? So he probably didn't want to do it, I would assume. And then it's like Young Thug locked up. So that's the other best one you got. So then it's, it's, yeah. it's Gunner, bro. Gunner's like the best option you have for another big artist that still hits your core demographic and then yeah. y'all are split. I don't know. Yeah, I can see that, man. I ain't, But I, like I said, I didn't think about that until you just said that. But And even beyond picking sides, based on this person's comment, it also could just be a tarnishing of brand because I don't know. Maybe Gunner would take a, has taken a hit from this recent conversation around the uh, you know the YSL cases, but then the stuff that Gunner revealed that might have also brought a hit to Baby. Yeah. So some people might not be coming out from a choosing a Baby uh, a Gunner side, but just like you don't represent what I thought you represented. Yeah. yeah. Like based on you know, and this is just. Conjecture based on the, on Buddy's comment right here. Um, Gunner would have sold more, but I yeah I didn't think about that angle at all. Then this one said, "Little baby been down bad ever since the white party." <laughs> I mean, all that that has shown me is that no matter how many rich friends you have, they can't save you when it comes to music. It's just a different space, different beast, man. Can't save you when it comes to music, and it can't save you when it comes to the internet, man. <laughs> Y'all really got me with those those French fry by the pool picks, bro. I ain't gonna lie. What did little baby do at the white party? All this shit. Why is he catching so much heat? What did he do? I haven't I haven't looked into it. Once I saw a white party, I thought about the meat milk. I was like, I don't even want to find out what he did. But what did he you do? Serious? Yeah, no, I hundred percent avoided it. I just cause, uh, like I said, bro. I just assume it's something. I don't even know if I can say it on YouTube, but you know what I'm saying. Something I ain't gonna say it, but something uh, not, something so unlike. <laughs> there was um. There were a couple pictures. I feel like I've only seen one picture, but people said it was multiple pictures of baby. The one that I saw could be described as a manwich. 
a man witch? Yeah. Like him between two men? Oh, you got that? Some he, shit? You got it right. <laughs> Bro, this is. This ain't it. I don't know, man. The internet be dramatic. I mean, this picture is kind of, he is cheesing kind of hard. I think it's because he cheeses so hard, bro. What's wrong with little bro hug, man? You know Caught him mid can't hu- He can't hug his boys, bro. Let me see the one that you see. This one right here. Oh, no. That's that's not the the one. That's not the man. I mean, this one is kind of crazy. That's not the man witch, though. Yeah, that's not the man witch? Oh, yeah. wait. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie. This left one kind of crazy, bro. But I feel like they had to set Buddy up. Yeah, man. The way he got him yoked up, that shit kind of wild. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> Like up. I wouldn't, I wouldn't let that picture get out. This one I don't think that's bad. It's this guy, bro. This guy the one is fucking his narrative up. That's the one. That's the one, man. And they could have set that up. You're right. They said, "Oh, bro, why look? <laughs> hey, man, you get a hug or whatever. I mean, you, you know, when they hug, have you run behind them and then we gonna we gonna flick it." Bro, and then like anybody that's ever hung around like a a rich white man, no, they like that, bro. They overly aggressive. Sometimes you gotta check. And he probably in the space where he feel like he could check these billionaires, bro. But like, which might, to your point, have. Tarnish his brand a little bit, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm used to saying little baby is this tough guy, and I believed him for a long time. But it's like, man, you let this—I don't know—he like he about five ten. Well, little baby ain't that tall either, so he probably about five seven, five eight. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Thin white dude come yoke you up, and the only reason you let it slide is because he got money. Nah, little baby, that ain't what you stand for. That's not what you about. Or at least that's what I thought. <laughs> the cheese and even him, <laughs> funny enough, because of the brand, even him being a certain amount of happy. Could have a brand tar- tarnish. He's like, well, see, what you doing out here happy, bro? But he got a pass on because he had that Hey song. I think that Hey song opened him up to where he could be happy more. All right. All right. <laughs> All right. So we'll end the pod with, with these comments that I believe are pretty dope. One, if you have an expansive and solid musical catalog, you will have no problem selling venues. But if half of your trajectory is repetitive, uninspired art, the masses won't think that ticket price is worth it. Having a social media presence and telling us how much you can flex without spending more time on your craft ain't it. Most of us are still about the art. Ooh, hold up. We gotta get this last one in because this person said, as an event promoter, large and corporate (laughs) festivals have made it harder for smaller shows and tours, mainly because of the artist's ask and ticket prices. Oh, that's another angle that we wouldn't have known. Artists are getting to the bag in most cases with larger corporate funded festivals. And then when they do smaller venues or a ticket, they have to have, they have that same ask, which now drives the ticket prices up. Then now let's talk about the economy. Some people would take that four hundred dollar ticket for one event instead of spreading it among four. All right. So this is what an event promoter thinks. We'll leave it at that. Those comments, I think those were all pretty helpful. We would love to know what y'all think in terms of festivals and are they becoming a massive threat to individual music tours? Are individual shows pretty much going to be dead? Let us know in the comment section below. Other than that, this is yet another episode of No Labels Necessary Podcast. I'm Brandman Sean. And I'm Corey. And we out. Peace.